Welcome to Our Best Self, a discussion sharing forum to help you see habits and practices that will lead to your happiness and success personally and professionally. Mental strength, happiness, health, business success, and the gamut at large. All right, so we're going to be answering questions around fitness and health. And some of these are unique to one person's perspective and other ones maybe can apply to everybody. So very happy to share this. If you've been following me at all, I've really spent a number of years studying movement, um, weightlifting, gymnastics, and actually I'm about to go on a week-long training camp and just have really great deep dive discussions around health, wellness, and movement patterns. And personally, just get to spend some time moving myself. Really excited about that. But these questions are not about me. They're about you. And so I appreciate those questions. So we're going to get these up. Got them on my computer. So if you're watching the live, I'm going to read them out loud and we'll go from there. There we go. First question. If you have tight and weak wrists, what should you do? All right. Well, that is very common, especially in our day and age when we are using our arms and bodies in a different way. So if you have tight wrists, um, they can, you know, if you're doing gymnastics, they can affect you in a handstand position, right? Like pinch here. Um, if you find people that are trying to do uh, barbell and moving the weights, they're going to have kind of pain in the situation there. So if you have tight wrists, uh, there's two things I'm going to recommend. Uh, number one, this assumes you don't have any kind of injuries, and we're going to build from there. It's just tight, maybe from underuse, underdevelopment. Number one, you'll take your hand, and you will have two hands forward, and you will just pulse. So leaning into the body, putting a little pressure there, then going to the sides, and then going reverse. Just, you know, three to eight seconds pulsing, nice and gentle, putting a little weight into it. That'll be good. And then invert the hand. So you're literally in a push-up position and you've got your hands rotating. You're being kind to those wrists. Get some general mobility in there. Strengthen them a little bit. That'll help. If your wrists are weak, um, the best thing to do is to use your wrists. Um, and how we do that is number one, you can hang from a pull-up bar and we'll put ourselves in a false grip. So we'll have the big knuckles up top or we can get in rings and even more and put it on our wrists. Those two things will be very good for you. Um, if you do that, hang, static hangs for a little bit, that'll be helpful. If the wrists are really weak, um, number one, we want to make sure we strengthen our hands and then our wrists with our forearms. So maybe get those squeeze balls. I find those to be really helpful. Uh, that will help strengthen the hand, make sure that all those joints are moving nicely. Also super good just for keeping everything moving and active. Then we're going to want to, if you have access to a barbell, put a band on a barbell, put a kettlebell attached to it, and simply roll it up and roll it down. If you don't have access to that, a simple uh, broomstick with a little weight in the center, just turn that for a couple of minutes. Um, that will do an amazing amount of uh, development for you. Be gentle. These are smaller muscle groups, you know, maybe twice a week. Uh, you should see improvement uh, probably about the third to fourth week. All right, that was Antorax question. Next one, we have generally heavenly's question on hugging strength. This actually has to do with being better at bear hugs and carrying weights in the front of our body. And so how do you build hugging strength? You do hugging exercises. Um, start light. Let's say you're going to carry a 30 pound, 50 pound, 100 pound object. Keep it close. Keep it tight. While you're squeezing, try to squeeze the bag together. A lot of times people will grab it and hold it like this. And you're just, they're more like they're pushing it towards their body. Right, and so if you're on the, the audio, I apologize. So when you think about bear hugging and holding heavy objects, you want to wrap your arms around it and squeeze it in. So your pecs should light up because you're pressing the bag together or the object together. Now, you can either go a certain amount of distance or you can go heavier or shorter distance. I would rather athletes focus on a slightly lighter bag, have great position, squeeze the bag, internal obliques that's right around your belly button, make sure we're squeezing those. 
and then go for maybe 200, 300, 400 meters. As you build up some distance, much like running, you would then add a little bit more weight to that bag, that sandbag or whatever you're carrying, and you will see absolutely your strength go up in this manner. If you are trying to build kind of the antagonist side, then I would definitely look at uh, rows for the arms. So that is generally heavenly. I hope that is helpful. Now, what exercises can I work if I can't carry my girlfriend, bridal style, for longer than 30 seconds? I'm assuming we're gonna be carrying the bride-to-be or the bride of the moment down the aisle perhaps or after. And so what can you do to carry uh, your love of your life? What you can do is, again, go back to that last um, question that was sent in. You can simply work on your bear hugs. Now, you're going to also need to build a lot of core muscles. A lot of people forget that when you're going to be carrying objects in front of you, your entire core, your obliques, your internal obliques, your whole posterior chain, everything is going to be active in there. So you might be strong enough you know, with your arms, you want to be able to carry things at your sides, but carrying the front requires the whole front of your body to be strong. So if I were looking to take the next couple months carrying my bride to be down the aisle or the other way, I guess, because you know, I'm not going to see her until after, so go the other way. Work on your internal obliques, work on carrying things bear hug style, just like the last question. And so Dysphoric Joy, I hope you have an amazing wedding and you get to carry her down the aisle. Focus there, you'll be great. So next question comes in from Yikes Sam. I just overheard someone mention that the record for being at the gym is eight hours. Would that really be effective at that point? The answer is no. I hate to bust anybody's bubble on this. Volume is not the answer for you achieving health and fitness. Uh, if you, even the most competitive competitors do not spend eight hours at the gym. Um, and one is assuming if you're at the gym for eight hours, you're actually training for those eight hours. No, training for eight hours or at the gym is completely worthless. Um, I think if you are pursuing, let's say, wellness, you're going to run a marathon, you want to just live to, to be 95, then you know focus on a skill or strength do some intensity pieces think about the different planes of movement in and out maybe an hour hour and a half if you're if you're doing your own programming you know don't go crazy if you have time and you're looking to maybe really leapfrog in a certain competitive way then do that in the morning then come back in the evening and then maybe do another session but do not spend eight hours at the gym, please. So thank you for your question, yikes, Sam. Pretty awesome question, uh, something I hear. Um, eight hours is probably the longest I've ever heard anybody ask that question, but you know, gotta focus. So we're gonna pull up one more question and we're gonna go from there. And so let's find, I'm pulling up this last question right here. All right, so one question is, should I always use a barbell for getting stronger? And the barbell is amazing, right? It's easy, you know, it's easy to organize it. You can find it in almost any training facility you go to. Um, there are many ways to get strong, and I would encourage you to think about dumbbells, think about sandbags, and anything odd object, honestly. The benefit of getting stronger is that you're then able to move weight faster, right? That is the goal. The goal is not to just, unless you're a power lifter, to just increase the weight. So if you're trying to get stronger all around, number one, there's the barbell. I also recommend single side weight, meaning that I don't care if it's a dumbbell or a kettlebell, could be a barbell, you put the weight on one side of your body, work in an imbalanced way that will really build strength. Um, our body naturally adapts and by forcing us into a support position, whether we're doing a, um, 
an overhead one arm overhead carry. We're doing kettlebells. We're doing um, uh, suitcase deadlifts. Any of these things will help you build all the um, strength that you're desiring. It allows us to remove what becomes a handicap with a, a fixed bar where we, our joints maybe aren't free to move. So gain strength, work unilaterally, and enjoy the barbell, but definitely embrace these odd objects. You'll find that the weight doesn't transfer the same. A lot of times I will see people look at things that they're, you know, they might say, oh, well, I can deadlift, you know, 200 pounds. And so they go for a sandbag that's 200 pounds. It's totally different. Um, when you look at other objects, so if you've always trained with dumbbells or always trained with a barbell, approach it by relative perceived effort and just go hard that day. Whatever, the, you know, if you're going for 80%, aim for 80%. If you're going for a heavier weight, go there. I promise you, you'll see great benefits if you focus in that way. All right, those are all the questions that we got for the day. Um, let me know your questions in the comments and happy to share everything and anything I can. So love you guys. Thank you so much for listening and I hope this is valuable and I'm gonna try to do more of this. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Our Best Self Podcast. This is a passion project where I'm sharing the daily writings and studies from around the world and best that I can find for you.